We have about 200 square feet of growing space in our winter garden and almost 700 square feet in summer. And we grow year round for a continuous harvest of fresh produce from our Zone 5 garden. People often comment that I must spend a lot of time working in the garden, but it's probably a lot less time than you might think. To give you a better idea of the amount of time I spend working in the garden at different times of the year, I'm releasing one video every season documenting the work I do over the course of seven days. Today's video is the winter edition of that series. In the summer edition of this series, I worked less than an hour over seven days, and I worked over an hour and a half in the autumn edition. In today's winter edition, I'll show the work I did from Monday, March the 13th through Sunday, March 19th. Let's get started on Monday the 13th. I'll play the clips at 10 times speed to keep the video from being too long. We've had very little snow this winter, but got a good amount on the night of Sunday, March the 12th. So early Monday morning, I swept the snow from our hoop house, hinged low tunnels, and cold frames. These structures are strong enough to easily handle the snow load, but there are veggies growing inside, and I wanted them to get as much sunlight as possible. I didn't bother clearing the snow from this low tunnel because there wasn't anything growing in it yet. It took just over four minutes to clear the snow. I returned to the garden Monday evening to harvest greens for dinner from the hoop house. I started by harvesting from the cold frames. There's a wide variety of greens growing in the cold frames, but I harvested mostly perpetual spinach, starboard kale, red vein sorrel, and claytonia. I then moved on to the low tunnels. I harvested more of the same greens that I just mentioned, but also harvested mustard greens, tadsoy, red kitten spinach, garlic chives, Egyptian walking onion greens, and mosh. Though it was freezing outside and very cloudy all day long, it was a relatively comfortable 40 degrees Fahrenheit in the hoop house. On sunny days, it gets much warmer. It's hard to express the pleasure we get from being able to harvest fresh veggies all winter long in relative comfort. I took a little over nine minutes to harvest the greens, bringing the total time for the day and week to 13 minutes and 23 seconds. It snowed again Monday night, so I was out early Tuesday morning to remove the snow. On average, the Chicago area gets about 20 inches of snow in January and February, but this year we didn't get any. This amount of snow is pretty normal for us in March. We only get about an inch of snow on average in April, and that's when I'll start planting cool weather crops in unprotected areas of the garden. It took about four minutes to remove the snow, bringing this week's total to 17 minutes, 32 seconds. On Tuesday evening, I decided to water the crops in our grow room. We direct sow most of our crops outdoors, but given our relatively short growing season, I start tomatoes, peppers, eggplants, basil, celery, onions, and leeks indoors. I also planted some dinosaur kale and Georgia collards indoors because I didn't have room for them outside. There's no running water in the grow room, so a four gallon backpack sprayer is very helpful and a great time saver. I top water plants that haven't germinated yet and bottom water them after they germinate by adding about a quarter inch of water to their trays. I won't water again until the trays and soil surface are dry. After watering, I return the lights to their original position, a couple inches above the plants. It took almost nine minutes to water the plants in the grow room bringing the week's running total to 26 minutes and 23 seconds. On Wednesday morning, I removed a little more snow, but more importantly, I vented to avoid overheating. Though below freezing, it was sunny enough that I knew from experience that I needed to vent. I propped the hoop house door slightly open and placed blocks of wood under one of the coal frames and the hinge low tunnels. This took under three minutes and brought the week's total time to 29 minutes and two seconds. I returned to the garden later on Wednesday to harvest greens for dinner. Late last August, we planted mosh or corn salad in this bed, and we've been harvesting it regularly for the last few weeks. Mosh is the fastest growing green at this time of year, and will likely bolt and go to seed fairly soon. So we're harvesting it fairly aggressively now, but we'll leave some plants to go to seed to produce next year's crop. I also harvested red kitten spinach and claytonia from the bed. I then went to the hoop house and harvested an assortment of greens, which I used to make a vegetarian Santa Fe salad. I copied this recipe from our favorite vegetarian restaurant. Though we eat a lot of salads, we also eat greens in a wide variety of cooked dishes. I've included a link to the Santa Fe salad recipe in the description below, 
along with a link to a photo album featuring dishes I made from garden ingredients. You might be surprised to see how many different ways we use garden produce and recipes. We expected temps well below freezing that night, so after I finished the harvest, I closed all of the vented structures. The harvest and venting changes took about 12 minutes and brought my weekly total of time worked to 41 minutes and 6 seconds. It was sunny again on Thursday, so early in the morning I vented all the structures in sunny areas of the garden. I also tried to move this cold frame to another location, but couldn't because it was frozen to the compost pile. This brought the weekly total to 42 minutes, 49 seconds. It was above freezing most of the day on Thursday, so much of the snow had melted by the time I returned to the garden in the evening. I moved the cold frame that was in the compost bin to this garden bed to warm the soil before planting carrots and turnips under the cold frame on Saturday. I then covered the compost bin with 6 mil greenhouse plastic in preparation for planting red Norland potatoes there on Saturday. With temperatures expected to dip well below freezing that night, I closed the hoop house and low tunnels. Finally, I added a ridge pipe to this low tunnel to strengthen its structure before planting purple viking potatoes there on Saturday. I attached half inch PVC snap tees to the top of each hoop, cut a half inch PVC pipe to length, and inserted the pipe into the snap tees before putting the plastic back in place. Thursday evening's work took about 8 minutes and brought the week's total to 50 minutes and 53 seconds. I didn't work in the garden at all on Friday. It was cool and overcast so I didn't need to vent and I didn't harvest any crops. It was good to take a little break because Saturday was the busiest day of the entire winter. I'm playing these clips at faster than 10 times speed to squeeze them into a relatively short video. On Saturday I planted potatoes, peas, lettuce, carrots, and turnips. To prepare for planting, I moved all of the tools, plants, and seeds I needed out to the garden. I planted purple viking potatoes in this bed, using seed potatoes saved from last year's harvest. As a rule, I plant potatoes using a no-dig approach. I mulched the bed with leaves, grass clippings, and comfrey last autumn. To plant the potatoes, I created furrows in the mulch, placed the seed potatoes in the furrows, and covered them up again with mulch. I then added more leaf mulch to thoroughly cover the potatoes and will hill them up with more mulch as they grow. I've used this basic approach for most of our potatoes for years and have been very happy with the results. I then planted sugar snap peas along the north side of the same bed. To avoid disturbing the roots of the peas, I won't harvest the potatoes next to them until the peas are done producing, probably in July. After covering the potato and pea bed with plastic, I prepared to plant red Norland potatoes in one of our compost bins. I collected a bucket of old potting soil that I stored in a cold frame and added it to the pile, along with sand and vermicompost, to create a growing medium for the potatoes. I use this approach simply to create more growing space in the garden, not because there's anything special about growing potatoes in a compost bin. I then planted red Norland seed potatoes in the newly added growing medium and mulched with leaves before covering the bin with plastic. I decided to put a few things away before planting carrots and turnips in this cold frame. These are two of my favorite cool weather crops. Carrots grow year round here under cover, and turnips can be started in late winter for a spring harvest. One of the great things about planting this early, about six weeks before our last frost, is that pests aren't active yet, so the crops can get off to a great start without any pest pressures. After planting the carrots and turnips, I returned the lid to the cold frame and moved on to one of my double layered hinge low tunnels to transplant lettuce that I started indoors. I direct sow most of my lettuce but started these plants indoors because at the time I didn't have space in the garden to start them. This bed is a great example of a polyculture bed with interplantings of a wide variety of unrelated crops. In addition to lettuce, there's mosh, claytonia, garlic, sugar snap peas, kale, parsley, spinach, and mizuna. Interplantings like this reduce pest damage by making it more difficult for them to find their favorite plants. After planting as many lettuce plants as I could fit in a bed, I watered all of the covered areas that had been planted. I usually don't water at all in December and January when we have under 10 hours of daylight and temps below freezing most days. But now that we have over 10 hours of daylight and warmer temps, I water as needed on days that are above freezing. I typically water the covered beds about once per week in late winter. After watering the garden, I went indoors to finish my work for the day by planting basil in the grow room. Like tomatoes, peppers, and eggplants, 
Basil is a heat-loving crop that does best for us when started indoors. After planting basil, I had spent just over an hour planting crops that Saturday, bringing the week's total to two hours and four minutes. Saturday was busy, so it was nice to slow down on Sunday, March the 19th, the last full day of winter. It was a sunny day, so in the morning I vented all of the covered areas that already had crops growing in them. I didn't vent where seeds had been planted, but seedlings hadn't emerged, because I wanted to warm the soil to encourage germination. Finally, I moved this cold frame to warm the soil where I'll be planting beets and turnips soon. I returned to the garden later to harvest greens for dinner. This was our third harvest for the week, which is fairly typical for the winter months. Soon, however, we'll be harvesting daily. This will remain the case until next autumn when growth slows down again. I spent about nine minutes working in the garden on Sunday, bringing the week's final total to two hours and 13 minutes. I hope this video and the seven days in the garden series gave you a better idea of the amount of work it takes for us to grow a lot of food on our little bit of land. Though two hours and 13 minutes isn't very long to work in the garden over seven days, we worked even less earlier in the winter in December and January when we didn't do any planting or watering. When I averaged the total time worked in the summer, autumn, and winter editions of this series, it comes to only an hour and 35 minutes per week, which is definitely worth it in my book, especially considering the huge amount of crops we harvest in a year. I'll be back in May for the spring edition of this series. Given the amount of planting I'm doing in late winter and early spring, I won't be surprised if I end up spending less time working in the garden in the spring edition than I did in the winter edition. We'll find out in May. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, please subscribe for more videos on how to grow a lot of food on a little land without spending much or working harder than you have to.